The Bradford assay is a protein determination method that utilizes the binding of Kamasi Brilliant Blue G250 dye to proteins. The dye exists in three forms, cationic, neutral, and anionic. Under each condition, the dye absorbs at a different optimal wavelength. Under strongly acidic conditions, such as those in which the reagent is stored, the dye is most stable as a doubly protonated red form. Upon binding to a protein, however, it is most stable as an unprotonated blue form. Kamasi Brilliant Blue G250 binds primarily to basic and aromatic amino acid residues. This results in a different binding capacity for different proteins. Therefore, it is best to use a protein of interest as a standard instead of BSA. In this demonstration, we will be preparing a total of 14 samples. This includes two dilutions for each of three unknown samples, a seven-point standard curve ranging from 1.875 to 120 micrograms per milliliter, and a blatant control, which is included as part of the standard set. The assay will be performed in a 96-well microtiter plate with each sample being distributed in triplicate to account for any variation between wells. Be sure to wear gloves when handling Bradford reagent as the reagent contains phosphoric acid. For this exercise, you will need Bradford reagent. Please remember to bring it to room temperature before using BSA standard stock at a concentration of 2 mg per milliliter. Sterile water to dilute your samples. Your unknown protein samples. One set of micro pipettes and tips. One P200 multi channel pipette. One tip discard container. One 25 milliliter reagent reservoir. One 96 well micro tighter plate. And two mil centrifuge tubes. You will also need a plate reader and a blank plate key form. The plate key form will come in handy in helping to organize how your samples will be distributed onto the plate. This module is divided into four parts, but this video will only cover the first three. Please refer to your manual for instructions on data analysis. In part one, we will plan our assay using a blank 96 wheel template. At this stage, you should also perform any calculations required to prepare your samples. In part two, all known and unknown samples will be diluted as determined by your calculations from part one. In part three, you will dispense all samples and reagent into plate wells and read absorbance at 595 nanometers. In part one, you'll be planning your essay. Please be aware that the steps listed here are not a direct reflection of all the steps required but serve to illustrate the general overview. First, you will determine how many samples you must assay. Be sure to include all unknown samples, such as purified protein fractions, as well as known samples, which include standards and controls. Second, you will determine the number of replicates. For plate assays, two to four replicates are typical. In planning your assay, you should also perform any calculations required to prepare your samples and standards. When all of these items have been determined, you can then fill in a plate key form. Step one, determine the total number of samples. In this assay, we have three samples, each of which will be diluted to one to 50 and one to 100. This gives a total of six unknown samples to be assayed as indicated in the top row of the tube rack. There will also be an eight point standard as indicated by the bottom row of tubes. Together, there will be 14 samples. Step two, determine the number of replicates. In this assay, each sample will be run in triplicate, meaning there will be three adjacent wells, all containing the exact same experimental reagents. Step three, perform calculations for dilutions. During this stage of preparation, it is best to complete any math that will be required to prepare your dilutions. When you're at the bench, you only want to be focused on the hands-on aspect of your experiment. Step four, fill in the plate key form. When sample determinations have been made, you may fill in your plate key form. The plate key form allows you to organize the matrix of an assay plate to minimize the chance of confusion when loading your samples. Convention dictates beginning at well A1 and to avoid having empty wells between samples. With practice, you will better learn to optimize your plate layout. 
In part two, you will dilute your samples. Begin by labeling a set of tubes for your unknown samples. When tubes have been labeled, you will add sample and water as determined by calculations performed in part one. In steps three and four, you will repeat this process for your standards using the stock BSA at a concentration of two milligrams per milliliter. Step one, obtain six tubes and label them accordingly for each of your unknown samples. Step two, add water. When tubes have been labeled, add the appropriate amount of diluent. In this case, it will be sterile or nuclease free water. Step three, add unknown sample. Transfer the predetermined amount of unknown protein sample to the corresponding tubes containing diluent. When working with small volumes, visually inspect the pipette tip to confirm the appropriate amount of sample is being transferred. When the transfer is made, pipette up and down two to three times to ensure the entire volume was dispensed from the tip and into the sample tube. Mix by inversion. Step four, label standard tubes. Repeat the previous two steps with standards. Begin by obtaining eight tubes and label them accordingly from zero to 120 micrograms per microliter. Step five, add diluent. Step six, add BSA. Add the appropriate amount of BSA to tube one as calculated in part one. Complete the dilution series by transferring standard from higher concentration tubes to the progressively lower concentration tubes as determined by your calculations. Be sure to visually inspect the tip when transferring the sample to confirm the volume. Pipette up and down several times to ensure the sample is completely transferred and that the contents are mixed. In part three, you will load and read the plate. All samples will be dispensed into wells as indicated by your plate key form. The protein samples dispensed, Bradford agent will be added and mixed. After short incubation period, the absorbance will be read at 595 nanometers. Step one, using a P200 pipette, Transfer 150 microliters of each protein sample into the corresponding wells. You may use the same tip to add protein to adjacent triplicate wells, but be sure to change the tip after each new protein sample to prevent cross contamination Be sure to dispense into the bottom of the well along the side of the wall. Avoid introducing air bubbles as they can interfere with the reading. Step two. Add Bradford. Transfer Bradford reagent to your reagent reservoir. Securely attach tips to a multi-channel pipette by rocking back and forth. Transfer 150 microliters of Bradford reagent to all sample containing wells. Be sure to change tips after each transfer to prevent cross-contamination. In order to prevent the introduction of air bubbles, pre-wet the tips by pipetting up and down a few times. You will notice air bubbles are dispensed back into the reagent reservoir rather than be introduced to sample wells. Slowly pipette up and down to mix the contents of each well. Add reagent to all remaining wells and incubate for 5 to 20 minutes at room temperature Read plate. After incubation, take sample plate to a plate reader set up to read absorbance at 595 nanometers. After samples have been read, immediately remove the plate and close the plate arm to prevent inadvertent damage. In step four, raw data is exported to Excel and should appear as a plate index indicating the absorbance values in corresponding wells. Refer to your lab manual for instructions on cleaning, organizing, and analyzing your data.